Okay, so we discussed about mean, median, mode. Okay, um, there are different types of mean. We don't need it. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, so see, this talks about. Let's start recording right here. Let me let remove this away. Okay, so distribution of annual household income in US. I mean, of course, this is old, but uh, enough, good enough for us to study. So look at the data and tell you what you see. Look at the graph and you try to interpret it for me. As you expect, okay, you have more household, percentage of household is on the y-axis. You have more household on the lower side of the income, right? Each of these are 50,000 bracket, okay? Less than uh, 50,000, 50 100K, 100K, 250, 150, 200K, etc. Okay, so you have more household, okay, uh, on the left side, true? And as you go towards right, the number of household with higher income decreases. Okay, I think this is what you would expect in any place. Okay, and the median, okay, is on the, you see, this is the, you see my mouse cursor, this is the median. That means half of the population is behind, you know, below, it is 50, it is 450. Okay, so half of the population is below 450k annual income and most of the house okay uh, higher than that is 50 percent right okay 50 income was roughly 50k sorry this is 50k so not 450 there's a dollar sign okay 50k okay so it is range of 5000 guys okay sorry i was saying 50,000. dollar looked to me like one number <laughs> So it is 5,000, okay? Zero under 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, so on. So half of the household income in the US have an income less than 50K, okay? And if, you're, if your income is more than 85K, okay, per annum, that means you are in top 25% of population. And if your income is more than 135K per annum, that means you are in top 10 percentage of population. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's the earning. But you have, what you see is, okay, <clears throat> last two. So till third last, probably this is what we expect. But suddenly you see the last two, have, the population is much more, right? They have approximately like uh, two, uh, one is little more than two, one is little less than two. So total 4% of population have a much higher income, right? Suddenly you see two tower, right? And those two tower probably will be, and this is, you know, my guess is probably because of the businessmen, you know, they're earning a lot more than the salary or the professional class, right? So they could be businessmen. That's where their income is more than other class. So, So what kind of plot is this? Um, this is, I mean, uh, what do you mean by plot in this? Can what kind of explain? plot? <laughs> well, I'm asking you a simple question. What kind of graph is this? What kind of plot is this? Bar graph. This, uh, this is the income in related. I it's a bar what... graph. It's not a bar graph. It's a histogram. 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 Histogram is a bar graph, special bar graph. Okay, so of course your answer is right, it's a bar graph, but no, call it as histogram, not a bar graph. Okay, bar graph uh, is the the bars will not be connected. Okay, they are okay. they are all individual. Like say, uh, production of apple, production of banana, production of oranges, expenses. You know, each of those are different, but histogram is where they are linked. Okay. 
So you have buckets, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, right? These are all interconnected. So yes, bars which are connected is your histogram. Okay, so okay. yes. Yeah. small again oops okay, okay. so next we're going to talk about okay what is called as um okay so Okay, so this is about mean, median, mode. You can read it. Okay, uh, this is also mean, median, mode. Okay, symmetric diagram. Okay, this is a symmetric diagram. Symmetric diagram means the data is mirror image. Okay, that means data on the left of mean. Okay, uh, okay. At the center, if you put a mirror, you get exact same copy on the right side. So copy of right side is, I mean, right side is copy of left side. So your symmetric histogram could be like the first one where you have very less this is what we discussed the day before yesterday when we met okay so you have less values on the either end more values at the center right we did 50 55 twice 60 thrice right so you have more values at the center as you go along the value decreases so this is also your symmetric histogram next one is called uniform histogram uniform means Either it is uh, 10 or 0, right? It's a, it's all uniform, okay? It's not increasing or decreasing, okay? It means it is same. It's the same, uh, same, yeah. yeah, equal. Equal. Either you get 0 or you get 100 marks, nothing in between, right? So it's uniform, yeah. yes. okay? It's uniform. So, of course, uniform graphs are also symmetric, right? Then second one hmm. is called bimodal. Bimodal is, is graph where your extreme end is high, okay? So your outliers are more, okay? I mean, of course, if they are more, then you don't call them outliers, right? Outliers means they are very less number, okay? So they are not outliers. What it means is extreme values. Extreme you'll find, ends. Yeah. yeah, extreme values you'll find more. And as you go towards center, you'll find less and less. So as you, So average people will be very less. Average things are less. See, average will always do, will be towards center. See, when you say average, average means what? Definitely there are some values more than average and some are less than average. So if you have 0 and if you have 100, average will be 50. Average will be less than the highest value and the higher than the lowest value. So lowest average will value. be, yeah, so average will be somewhere in between, right? And you have higher values on the either side. So either side you have higher values and the average will come towards center. That's why that line you see is your mid median mode. Okay, the line is your mid median mode. Your your you know, but as I said, the average values are rare to find. You have mostly extreme. So yeah, I don't know. I can't think of a situation, but that's what it means. Okay, where you have more people with less income and high income, very few people with average income. So you get something like that. So all these three are symmetric histogram. So if it is symmetric histogram, your mid median mode will be same, exactly same or more or less same. Okay, there will not be much difference between median and mode. But if your histogram is not symmetric, histogram is not symmetric. The last example that we saw was not symmetric. You have bigger bars on the left side and very small bars on the right side. Either the big bar should be in the center or at the extreme end or same height. That's when you say symmetric. That means you put your mirror image, right? Symmetric means mirror image. That means if you put a mirror at the center, the right side image that you get should be same as the image that you get on the left side. That's not the case when the graph is or your plot is not symmetric. Okay. Not symmetric means you have higher end at one end and lower at another end okay so if you see these graphs on the right side top okay the left side is called skewed graph i'll talk about what is positive and negative in a minute 
it is skewed. That means it's not a symmetric graph. Skewed graphs are not symmetric graph. Non-symmetric graphs are called a skewed graph. They are skewed. They are not symmetric. They are skewed in one direction or towards one side. Okay. So those are your negatively skewed graph. Okay. That means you look at the tail and see which side tail is going. So we discussed other day, right? Did we discuss other day about um, four quadrant? Yes or no? Yes. Right? Yes. We discussed about four quadrant, right? Okay. So when you go towards horizontal left side, which, uh, 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 you know, horizontal axis is which axis? X-axis. Horizontal is X-axis. Vertical is? Y-axis. Y-axis. So going towards left means you're going towards which direction? Negative minus, direction. Minus X, correct. Negative mm -hmm. and on the X oh, axis, yeah. so minus X. When mm -hmm. you go towards the right side, it means yeah. going towards yeah. positive X side, right? So yeah. now if you see the first graph, the oh, tail yeah. is going towards yeah. left. Yeah. Tail is going towards left. It means that you're going towards minus X side, correct? So going towards minus X will make your graph negatively skewed. Going towards right side will make a graph pause. Right side means positive x-axis. Right? You're going towards positive x-axis. So you are going in positive x direction. Okay? So we call it as positively skewed graph. This is how you don't have to buy heart. Okay? You just see. If you have a outliers on left hand side, if you have outliers, outliers will be always less in count. Right? Mostly it will be average. Okay, outliers will be there, of course. That's the every process will have outliers. But outliers, the count is less. If count is less, that means you're going towards minus x side. If your count is more, okay, that is your hump. So hump will be on the right side, positive side. But your tail, tail is going, 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 going. Which side? Minus x side. So that's why we call it as negatively skewed graph. If the tail is going towards positive x side, we call it as positively skewed graph. Okay. If it is equal symmetric, of course it is symmetric. We call it as neutrally or no skewed graph, normal graph. Normal plot is neutral or your symmetric. Okay. Now in symmetric, we know that mean median mode is same. What happens when it is skewed? What happens when it is skewed? What happens to mean median mode? See, mode represents the maximum value. So mode will not change. That's what we discussed in the graph, if you remember. Okay. When we added those extreme points, what happened? Mean ran very fast. One value of 500 made mean to be about 100, isn't it? So mean ran towards the outliers. Median also ran towards, I mean, not ran. Ran is not right word. Mean walked towards <laughs> higher side, right? Slowly it changed, but very slowly it changed. Okay, so median will also go towards right side, but it will go very less, less, less faster. Okay, median will run. Sorry, mean will run. Median will move slowly. Mode is is the representation of higher values, which will be at the hump. So hump will be your mode. Hump is your mode, and when you move towards right, you are going away from mode towards the outliers, correct? So if it is a positively skewed graph, if it is a positively skewed graph, which side of the mode you will have median or mean? If it is a positively skewed graph, which side of the median will you find um, uh, mean and mode? On the right side, right? Because your tail is on the right, you're adding a higher value on the right, mean will run fast towards right. So mode will remain same. Mean and medium move towards right. Mean will run faster. Mean will go much faster than uh, median. So you'll see the graph on the right side, right? Mean is towards right side and median is at the center. Okay, it's at the center, but still closer towards mode, not closer to mean. On negatively skewed graph, since you have a larger values on the negative side, your mean will run faster on the right towards right. Okay, so mean is on the right, median is also on the right, but closer to mode. 
Did you understand? Okay. These yes, are your sir. skewed graph. When you add a skewed member, skewed values, your value will change. Your mean will change much faster. That's why we tend to look at median, not mean. When your graph is normal, then of course mean, median will be the same. But if your graph is not normal, one bad number will change the entire landscape. One bad member will change the entire landscape. Okay. So that's why you have to be careful when you talk about mean and when you talk about median. Okay. And of course, there's a formula to calculate skewness. We, we don't have to do that. Now let's ignore it. Now, this talks about something called as variability. Right? Variability. Now, the thing is, okay, let's say our class timing is at 6 o'clock. Right? Let's say class time is at 6 o'clock, right? And one day I come at 7 o'clock to start the class. Will you like it? No, that's the ending time, right? Isn't it? And one day I come at 5 o'clock. Will you like it? No, because you are not prepared to join the class at 5 o'clock, right? When I say 6, you want me to come around 6. Maybe a couple of minutes before is fine, a couple of minutes after is fine. But not one hour before or after. But if you start complaining, you know, sometimes it starts at 5 o'clock. When I log in, class is almost about to get over. Sometimes it starts at 7 o'clock. We are all gone and he starts the class. So what will I say? I'll say, see, you take the average of the class's time. It is, what is the average of 5 and 7? 6. Right? So I'll say, see, you take the average. Average is 6 a.m. So on average, I'm taking classes 6 a.m. How can you complain? Is uh, is my point justified? Yeah. Correct? So that's what I'll do. From tomorrow onwards, what I'll do is I'm going to take, I'll come join one hour late. I'll take the session sometimes at 7 o'clock. Sometimes I'll join 5 o'clock. I don't care if you guys are there or not. By the time you start joining, else the session is over. Yes? So one day I'll take 5, other day I'll take 7. And I'll not tell you which day I'm taking at 5 and which day I'm taking at 7. Does that work? No. 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 No, but I'll tell you, see, the average if you take it 6 a.m. Yes. 6 a.m. is our time. <laughs> So who's uh, so like I'm justified, right? Okay, so average alone cannot determine how good is your process. Average alone is not good justification of the process. Okay, along with average, we also look need to look at the range. That's what is variability all about. Again, we'll talk about few metric which talks about the variability. Range is one such. Range should be smaller. Smaller should be the range. Okay? So, one thing is, yes, average should be, okay, uh, as per our expectation. Okay? So, when you say average, average should be same. Our expectation is 6, so average should be 6. Correct? At the same time, the variance or the variability or the standard deviation has to be as minimum as possible. It's not possible to have zero. It's not possible to start class exactly at the same time every day, exact six every day. It's not possible to do that. But the variance, um, I mean, the difference should be maybe five minutes or maybe seven, six minutes, not more than that, right? Even 15 minutes is a bad, you know, uh, difference. So we should look at the variability also in the process not just the average so average yes it's important one aspect is average other aspect is variability so in variability we have metric like range interquartile range variance and standard deviation so simple easiest of all is range range means you look at the minus min, uh, you know you look at the maximum value and minus the lowest value so what was the maximum delayed delay i had seven o'clock what is the minimum, uh, you know, earliest start I had? 5 o'clock. 7 oh, okay. minus 5 hours is 2 hours. 2 hours range is a too bad. 
okay so if i justify using the average value you will counter me with the range you say our duration itself is one hour and your your average is your range is two hours okay so you will you know higher the range bad is your process okay mean it should be as per the expectation expected value minus mean okay you want it to be zero right but again i just told you i can give an example okay here <clears throat> the range is important okay so range is one such thing then you have interquartile range okay so i'll take an example and we'll talk about what i'm trying to say let me open an excel again okay so let's take an example of a car uh, distribution center okay they want to um, they're promising you've been hired to um, evaluate their process their 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 process right you want to evaluate their process so there are a lot of customers complaining that you know uh, they they don't keep up to their promise they'll tell you they will deliver the car in 30 days and they don't keep up to their promise okay so let's say, okay, uh, let's say this is your customer one, right? So customer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so let's, we'll talk about the, the, the number of days they promised. Okay, and when they delivered. Okay. So let's say the number of days that they promised was, uh, let's say, uh, let's let's keep it 20 days for all. Let's make it easy, right? Let's keep it 20 for all. Now, when they delivered, okay? So let's say, you know, first car they delivered after 35 days. Second car also after 35 days. You know, this car within five days they delivered. Within five days they delivered. Within five days, 35 days. To make it simple, I'm going to say just 35, five, okay? 35 5 okay let's say this is what they delivered so what is the difference what is the uh, what how much they were there was a deviation from the process so deviation or difference okay we call them deviation or difference so this would be yours what you know we'll do 20 minus 35 okay and you you know you calculate for all then we'll evaluate so total. So this is the deviation, right? And you perform the total here. Okay. So we'll say total here, and you calculate the total. So how much is the total? Zero. Deviation is zero. But you know, is that good? No, it's not good. Okay. So average average deviation AD average or mean deviation we call the mean deviation or mean difference MD is okay so this is sum divided by you have ten numbers right divided by ten so you get zero but does it really deviate from zero no okay so it's, it is because your negative numbers your negative numbers and your positive numbers are cancelling each other. So whether you do it, you you deliver it after the due date or you deliver before the due date, both are considered as bad in the process. Why? Okay, let's say you go and you book a car and they tell you that, okay, after 35 days, we'll deliver. And within five days, they call you, sir, your car is ready. You go and, you know, please come and collect it. Otherwise, we'll give to somebody else. Okay, you, you may not have arranged for re remaining fund, right? Because you think it's 35 days, so... You, you know you are you you know you'll be arranging fund according to that okay or maybe you're out of time you you know you're out of time you're on vacation they call you right you're not going to like the process okay so process means certainty we want certainty in the process the statistics talks about you know uh, certainty you promise and you meet the promise 
even with meeting early is also not a problem, right? Let's say we set up a call, okay? And let's say, okay, we want to call two hours before. Not not, not um, acceptable, right? Because you would have planned something else before that time. So if the time is eight, you want meeting to start at eight o'clock only, not one hour before because you might have planned something else, right? So delivering before or after both are equally bad from statistics perspective so what we do is we have to we have to convert this positive value to remain positive the negative value has to be converted to positive so how do you convert negative to positive there are two ways one way is you do absolute deviation absolute value again if you remember okay we say absolute okay absolute value okay is used when you keep positive, positive, but negative, you make it positive. That's called absolute value. Second way to convert this into square, uh, into positive is to find the square of the value. Square of negative 5 is positive 25. So, see, you understood the problem with the negative values, right? The problem with negative values is negative and positive values are going to cancel each other and going to get 0 which is yeah. okay which is not the right indication not of a good one. yeah not not it's not a good one it's not right indication right it's not indicating yes. correctly right it's like wow zero this yes. is the example i gave you six and yeah, i know i started class at five and eight okay one hour early one yeah. hour late one hour early one hour late one hour early one hour late finally it's zero difference is zero and i can claim the difference is zero but that's not true right so either you convert yes. into absolute value or you make a square to convert into um, to to get a oh. value. So what we do here is if you convert into absolute value, this minus 15 will be 15. Plus 15 will be 15. Plus 15, 15. Plus will remain as it is. Minus will become plus. Okay. So now you do the total and you divide it by so we can directly say average. Okay, so it is 15. This is called as mean absolute deviation. MAD. Mean, it's absolute value, right? So mean absolute deviation. So this is mean absolute deviation. We call it mean absolute variance, mean absolute difference, okay? Or mean absolute error in in, uh, in machine language term you also call this as mean absolute 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 error okay so M E E M E E M A D they are same okay so this is your mean absolute error okay this is the error that the process has it okay or deviation that you are you are having it second way is you perform the square. So you perform the square, so it becomes 15 minus 15 into minus 15. And then you double click on here and you get the values here. Okay? So this is your square of the value. No, how do you find the average? So you will say average, right? Equal to average. So you get 225. So this is called as mean squared deviation or mean squared error or very commonly we call it as variance. This is your variance. Common term is variance. This is your variance. Okay. So we have converted negative into positive, you know, squaring and then dividing by, to find the mean, you have to divide the sum by n, right? Sum by n is mean. So we took the deviation, we took the deviation, we squared it, and then we found the mean. That's why deviation, squared mean, mean, squared deviation. This is the variance. But problem here is, we are talking about apples and this became apple square, right? Not good. Your, your, your units should be same unit. If you are talking about X, it should be X. If you're talking about 
y should be x. Okay, I'm talking about x, but you give me answer in x square. Not good, right? So it's always good to have same unit. So what it says is, okay, so they say, okay, the variance is not good. Okay, it does, it tells us, but it's not in the same unit. It's not same level as the input. So we will convert this into square root because this was a square, right? We'll convert this into square root. So this becomes your square root, SQRT of 2 to 5. Okay, 15. Okay, so this is your root mean squared error root mean squared deviation rsmsd or rmse root mean squared error okay root mean squared deviation root mean squared error rmse or you call it as standard deviation This is your standard deviation. In statistics, we call it standard deviation. In machine learning, we call it as RMSE. Okay, so that's the that's how we calculate RMSE. Okay, and this will tell you the exact deviation. Okay, the standard deviation talks about how bad is your consistency. Talks about the consistency, right? If you get every time 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 your deviation will be zero okay so you you want deviation to be as less as possible you want deviation to be as less as possible this is your standard deviation right Yes, okay. So, okay. So, so along with mean, median, mode, we also need to know variance and standard deviation. Okay. So, range and standard deviation. Okay. This is two important aspect. Okay. Now, going back to our discussion. There's one more metric here called as quartile. Okay. We spoke about median. Median is dividing the data into two parts. Quartile is dividing the data into four parts. Okay. So you find a median. That means you have, let's say you have 100 values. You have 100 values. Find a median which will divide into 50 numbers on the left, 50 numbers on the right. The 50 numbers that you have on the left, again you find a median. And 50 numbers on the right, again you find a median. Okay? So, mean, so, <clears throat> okay, so, <coughs> see, median is always about number of values. Median is nothing to do with the value per se. It is always about the number of values. Okay, so let's say if, so you have number from, you know, 100 numbers you have. So first we'll figure out the median here. Let's say this is the median. Okay, so this is going to divide the data set into two halves. Now again, you go and find the median. Okay, so let's assume you have a median here. Okay, this is a median and this is, let's say your median. So that means from here till here. So this is, let's say, point 0 or A. Okay, we'll write it here. A, B, C, D, E. And E we will make it right align, let's say. So these are your points A, B, C, D, E, right? It means you're starting from A, going all the way up to B, okay? These, how many percentage of data will be here? 25% data. So this we call it as quartile zero, Q zero. 
Q0 is same as the lowest value. A is the lowest value in the because we know that when you're trying to find a median, you have to arrange the data in the increasing order. Yeah. In order yeah. to find the median, you have to arrange the data in the increasing order. Right? And when you arrange the yeah. increasing order, on the leftmost value is going to be your zero. Sorry. Lowest, lowest value. value. Lowest, value. lowest value. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be your lowest value. So we call it as Q0. Q0 means the lowest value. Q0. Then this is your Q1. Quartile Q1. 1. Okay. Quartile 1. Quartile 1 means the value from you know that that number that number divides data set into 25 and 75 percent 25 on the left 75 on the right so 25 values will be on the left 75 values will be on the right this is your median right or your quartile 2 q2 q2 quartile 2 quartile 2 is same as median is going to divide the data set into 50%. 50 percent 50 on the left 50 percent on the right then this is called as quartile 3 quartile 3 will divide data set to 75 percent on the right 25 percent and 25 percent on the left. left left this is your q4 q4 means the highest value hmm. q4 means highest value that means 100% value on the left side and 0% on the right side. Right? There's nothing on the right. You 0 is something which have 100% values on the right, 0 on the left. So lowest is Q4, highest, sorry, Q0. Q0 is lowest. Q4 is your highest. Q4 is the highest. Right? And you have values in between those. Okay? So yeah. this is called quartile. On same lines, you can divide a data set into 100 parts. When you divide a data part data set into 100 parts, we say percentile. Okay? You will hear percentile, right? Most of the exams, we talk about percentile. Percentile mm -hmm. means you are dividing the data into 100 parts. Okay? So when you say somebody has got 99 percentile, that means there are 99 percent people below it. Okay, 99% people below. When your rank is your rank is in the top 1%. Okay? So you will hear words like percentile, quartile, decile. Okay, decile is dividing into 10 parts. Okay, so so twenty five per twenty percent data on the left. Okay, twenty 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 percent. Okay, but what we use is quartile only. Mostly okay. we'll be using quartile. Okay, now what does quartile talk about? Quartile talks about twenty five percent data age, right? So what it says is, okay, let's say one day I came late. Maybe let's say one day I came late thirty minutes. But most of the okay. time, I come on time or maybe a minute late. Okay, out of 70 days of our class, 80 days of our class, 70 days of our class, 80 days of our class, if I come one day late by 30 minutes or 40 minutes, just one day, don't you think I should be ignored? That late should be ignored? If I come regularly, that's what, you know, you should, right? If one day I come late, shouldn't you excuse me? Yeah, they can excuse. Right? So you can excuse me, right? So what happens if I take highest and lowest? Since you have come one day late, highest will always be that 30 minutes or 20 minutes which I came late. So anytime you do range, okay, it's going to be a bad result. So we say, okay, 
okay there are some outliers let's ignore those one or two cases so how do you ignore one two cases so instead of finding qr that means range we find interquartile range interquartile range iqr is nothing but iqr is equal to q3 minus q1 so you might have i'm talking about very large data set okay which have thousands and ten thousands and millions there could be some data which is extremely small some data which is extremely large right outliers we'll have outliers on both the sides so what iqr says is okay there are some outliers they are outliers are not large in numbers they will be less but the value is such that it's going to skew your total calculation your mean will become mad right so what we say is okay instead of looking at the range let's look at iqr okay let's remove 25 percent from both the side okay so we will remove 25 percent data from both the side okay and let's focus on the mid uh you know nine uh, 50 percent now you can decide okay this is an approach this is iqr you can divide it into portion of uh 10 10 10 right and then you say okay i'm going to ignore 10 percent on the left 10 percent on the right you can ignore five percent on the left five percent on the right okay it's up to you what you want to do but this is going to be a good practice then you're removing finding out range okay this will take away both your um what do you say uh, the lower values and the higher values from the system correct so your you it will not be much different okay or uh, it will not be bad in a way so if one or two mistakes can be ignored that's why we use iqr iqr is used is to ignore one or two mistakes basically so iqr is the range that you will do after calculating q1 q2 q3 q4 after calculating q1 q2 q3 q4 you calculate and you do q3 minus q1 you ignore in range we are doing q4 minus q0 range we are doing high minus low so high minus low is basically q4 minus q0 but now we are doing iqr which is q3 minus q1 okay interquartile range okay now <clears throat> when you calculate interquartile range then we plot a graph okay there's one important graph that we'll do which is called as box plot we'll just talk about it for today and we'll end our okay we'll take an example uh, next class we meet okay so let me take a paint and talk about it okay so you should be able to see my paint now so box we're talking about box plot okay box plot obviously will have a box box can be horizontal sleeping or standing okay so let's talk about first sleeping uh, uh, horizontal uh, sleeping box okay but horizontal box so horizontal box will look something like this you have a rectangle okay okay you have a rectangle and you have a line in between here somewhere okay within this uh, rectangle so you have rectangle you have a line within the rectangle and you have a handle like this this is a box with handle okay and you can have you know some outliers here some outliers here some dots may may not be there okay this is typically how a box plot look like okay now what are these lines okay what is the meaning of these boxes and these lines so this handle that you see and this is your y you know x axis where it's from numbers are written 0 5 10 15 so on this means this is your q0 this is q0 q0 means the lowest value so handles are represented by the highest and the lowest value okay q0 is the lowest value q4 is your highest value handles are your 
q0 q4 then the starting of the box is q1 and ending of this box is q3 and this line here at the center is your q2 or same as median okay so q2 is your median you have q0 q4 the highest and the lowest value at the handle of the box and these are your q1 q2 so your box is nothing but interquartile range box is nothing but interquartile range okay q2 is median this is your minimum and and these dots indicate outliers. If you have any outliers, this dot will represent. So box plot is the only plot which will also give you the outliers. Scatter plot will not tell you. It will plot, but it will not tell you, that, tell you that it's outlier. Histogram will also plot. It will not tell you that it's outlier. You have to look at it. You have to look at the graph and you have to figure out by yourself. Right? Oh, this looks like outliers. You know, you have to look at the graph and you have to figure by ourself that it's outlier. But box plot will tell you, oh, there are three outliers on the left side, there are three outliers on the right side. And they will, okay, it will not include outliers in your analysis in the box plot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So with that, we stop here. And uh, Monday when we meet, we'll take a couple of examples. We'll see the importance of box plot, how, what it is, what message it gives us, what does it tell us. Okay? Yes, okay. Okay. Sure. Any questions, do let me know. Otherwise, we'll end it here.